Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Perhiniak. Uh, today I will be joined by Emily Melling as well. Okay. We are going to present a collaborative workflow. So it's a very hard thing to show live, but hopefully it will all work out fine. I like to think of CC, Creative Cloud, as cool collaboration, because that's what it can be. Um, and uh, we are going to work on a real life project and we will even have some client feedback live. Uh, so it's a lot of things that can go wrong. <laughs> Hopefully it will work out fine. So um, you can use the Creative Cloud services uh, to work with people in the same room or to work together with people from all around the world. And in an ideal world that looks like this, uh, nice people working together from different countries joining in. And of course, sometimes collaboration can look like this as well. That's obviously not what we want to present today. There's five stages normally that I uh, divide a project in. The first one is the preparation, where you need to decide what resources you are going to uh, work with. And then collecting everything together, then the creation, refinement, and then the publishing. Now, I will show glimpses of each of these stages in the work. Um, and the preparation part is what we are doing right now. So we just decided to work on this project together. So Emily and me uh, joined together, joining forces to work on this project. And the first thing where you should start a project, especially when you collaborate, is to create a Creative Cloud library. Now, I can't stress this enough because it's a feature that not many people use, or even if they use, they don't really see the uh, power in working with Creative Cloud libraries. So that's the first thing that I will try to demonstrate here to you and then the, the advantage of that. So let's say we sat down with Emily and then we decided that we need to work on and continue this project that we started off. So the product is a smart home device. Uh, and we have these cool uh, characters representing the family. And this is like a leaflet that will be printed out about this product. But we will need to also create a website for this uh, service or for this, uh, this product. And uh, we will need to highlight the features of it. So what will happen is that I will start putting together the design for the website, first just creating a first version of it, that draft in Illustrator. But I will be working with Emily, who is going to prepare the icons for me. So she is the icon designer in this task. To be able to make this work together, what we will need is the library to be working and to be shared. So you can see we have CC libraries in all of the Adobe applications. You will find them in the window menu under the panels. It's either called CC libraries or just libraries. Don't ask me why there's an inconsistency in that, but that's the same thing. It will come up here in the panels and you will see that you can create multiple libraries. And I have so many of them, like I have one. Uh, which has all the Adobe icons, or most of them, like all the different products, because I have to do presentations on them a lot. I have one prepared for this. And the cool thing is that I can easily access them. They can be vector files, pixel files. You can even save character styles into your uh, Creative Cloud libraries um, and so much other thing. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is that this one, the Sweet Home project, you can see is already shared. So I can see the little uh, icons there, meaning that it's a shared project. You can have multiple people collaborating with you. All you need to have is to make sure that all of them are, uh, they are all on the Creative Cloud. So they have their own uh, licenses. Obviously, you can't share the same license on more than two, two computers. And even then, if you work in a team, it's best to have individual licenses, unfortunately, for everyone. Otherwise, it can be a little bit messy because you would be overwriting your own files or each other's files. So what I'm going to show you here is that if I were to start a new one, this one is already set up to work with Emily, but I'm just going to show you if I create a new library, all I have to do is to give it a name. Let's say test, all right? And then if I want to invite anyone to this library, I click on the panel menu again, and all I have to say is to collaborate. So to start our cool collaboration, we click on that, and then it will come up with the browser where I can put in the Creative Cloud account email. Or that's all you need to know from your 
uh, designer or creative um, friend who is going to join you. So you just have to put the email address in here. I think it can be other email addresses as long as it gets to that person they will be able to link their account with it and then you can also decide whether you let them to edit your library or just to view it if they can view it that means they can use the elements you add in it in their own project so they can drag and drop elements from it but they can't override the library so they can't add their own graphic elements or they can't delete elements from it so they just have, have the option to use it, but they can't make changes to it. If I choose to allow them to edit it as well, that means they have the same uh, options that I have, apart from deleting the whole thing, only I can do that, uh, the initiator. So now we have already that uh, original one that I had here, which we already set up just to avoid any issues here in the live demonstration. So the Sweet Home project, I already linked to um, Emily's account. So let's see if she gives us an icon. So I already told Emily to prepare a light bulb icon for us because we need to talk about the electricity being a feature of this product. So I will need a few icons and while I'm working on, the, on a design like this leaflet, maybe I already need to put that light bulb here to represent it. See, it showed up there. So Emily was really fast. Thank you very much. Man, that was that was great. Let's see how it looks. All I have to do is to drag and drop it in here and I can place it in just as normal as any other image. And of course, I can then add things like a text wrap on this because it's a vector image. It's already going to recognize the uh, borders of it or I can use detect edges and so on and so forth. So this is already an element that we are using from the Creative Cloud. But now comes the interesting thing. So I added this in my design. And what I would like to do is uh, to get another element. Uh, let's just say a padlock. Let's, let's ask Emily, can you do a padlock for us? Cool, all right. So um, because we need to talk about security as well. So it's saving energy, this product, and it's secure as well. Um, that was really quick again, thank you. So there's a padlock. Uh, and conveniently, we just need to drag and drop it in here and it's already part of our design. Now let's see if Emily is really uh, good at making changes as well. This is actually we haven't uh, discussed, but let's see if you can do it. So what I would like to do is to change one of these icons, but because I'm working on something else, I like Emily to do the hard work for me. I just nice. like drag and dropping <laughs> things. We should get another illustration from Emily. So this is again about uh, security. We will get a shield icon. So we have the shield here. Let me show you guys. We have the shield and this is another element that we got from Emily and this is going to maybe be the element here somewhere on the page that we will show as a feature. But I need to change the colors of this. So what happened is that she made changes to the source of that element that we have here in the graphics. And currently we still see the original colors, but see, it updated. So even the changes that she does later to those elements that she added will also show up in my work. And then all I have to do is to make sure that I want to use the updated version, I have to update the actual file. Just like a link, when you have an update on a link on your local computer, a, a file coming from the cloud can also be the same way updated. So these are not links, they are coming from the cloud, uh, but behaving very similarly to a linked image in InDesign. But now that we have these elements, let's say we need also uh, something else. So because this is just a preview image, the one that I have here, we will also get from Emily the vector version of that. So I'm going to replace this. If you have an element already in a design, you can also drag and drop from your creative cloud. And like normally, you can replace items in it. So now this is a vector version of the same thing. So we updated that one. But there's of course another very important part of a creative cloud uh, library. And that's that you can use stock illustrations or uh, photos. If you remember, I showed this uh, page here. And we are at that point where we are preparing and collecting assets. So instead of just creating things, we can also add things from Adobe Stock. 
Now, Adobe Stock is something that you have to pay extra. Uh, it's not, not directly part of the Creative Cloud subscription. So if I go into, uh, let's say, uh, this one, I think I have some uh, stocks. These here, what you can see, like this one, is actually an Adobe Stock image, you can see, and it's already licensed. But I can show you, if I want to search for new items, I can go into here, within my Creative Cloud Libraries panel, and I can say I would like to find a living room illustration. So that's what we need in the, in the background. And then it starts to come up. Now, actually, the illustration, I don't think we need to type in. What we can do is to filter these options. So we can see that we have filtering options here on the top. Instead of looking for photos, if I'm interested in illustrations, I can do that. But if I want to be more specific, I can say only vectors. And then what happens when I use one of these? There's the one that I licensed, by the way. And it says that it's already licensed. So I bought that element or design. But if I want to use any of the ones that I haven't licensed yet, then I can, of course, still do that. So let me just go back to our design. And I'm just going to drag and drop it in here. So uh, oh, did I just lose that? Let's do it again, living room. Actually, there's one here that I can use. So I drag and drop that in. And even though I haven't purchased this yet, I can still use it in my design. And until I'm 100% sure that I will need this, I can just keep it as is with the watermark on it. It's very subtle as well, that watermark, luckily. So it's actually good to show something to a client. And then when it's confirmed that we need that element or when we need that illustration, only then you will need to buy it and license it on Adobe Stock. Um, I will come back to Stock a bit because if you are not using Stock to buy and license images, you can still use Stock to make money. And there's actually a very nice streamlined way of not just downloading things, but uploading your own work. And I know several designers who actually specialized in selling stock illustrations or photographs. And now Adobe Stock became one of the biggest players in that field. Uh, so some, some of my friends actually now focused 100% on producing either illustration or photographs and uploading their work on Adobe Stock. And then you can make really good profit from it. Um, I will show you exactly how that works. So we will get to that point, and you probably saw it here in my uh, slide that Adobe Stock shows up at the end as well in the publishing uh, part. So if a project is not uh, under NDA and you are not doing it for like within a very strict uh, environment for a client, but it's more like a provocation piece or it's something that you are doing uh, as a demonstration, then you can probably sell that work on Adobe Stock if you have the full license, I mean, the rights to sell it. So I'm going to come back to that as well. But we are still at this stage, the collection stage, where we are collecting things from our uh, devices and our collaborators. Here in the Creative Cloud app, we can also see under the assets, the fonts and the market. Now, market is another really cool part, which again, not many people check out and look into properly. Market is similar to Adobe Stock, but it's completely free, as long as you are a Creative Cloud subscriber. You have access to lots of content that was created by other artists, and they are mock-ups and templates and, and all kinds of things, brushes as well, which you can download and you can use it freely in even commercial projects. So let's say we need something for this project, maybe, uh, I don't know, like a background, but we can scroll down, I can show you several things here. Uh, maybe that, that background is quite nice, let's say I want to use it. All I have to do is to download it. So here I can see who's the author, and I can decide which library I want it to be added to. So if I want to add it to my Sweet Home project, I can just choose that. Was that the one that we did together? The, is the name, if you just double check in, create an illustrator. Yeah, yes, Sweet Home Project. So let's just sync it into that. So now not only me and Emily are working on this library, but we started to involve other creators who we haven't even met, but we are all part of this big family, the Creative Cloud. So let's see how that turned out. 
once I come back and I select my Sweet Home project, there you go, there's our cool pattern that I just stole from <laughs> someone. So let's see if I add this in here. So I don't know where I can use this. I start to run out of space, but maybe I just create another page, okay? And I'm just going to drag and drop this in here. So if I add this pattern in the background, I can then later on use this for my next page in this leaflet. And the cool thing about this is that it's completely vectorized as well. So I can still see who it is uh, coming from. So if I double click on this, I can access the original file as well and I can make changes to it. Now it's actually a JPEG, so it's good I checked it in case I need to worry about resolution. If it's a print project, it's good to check what assets you are using. So I can see that the original file is a JPEG, but most of the times you would find vector files as well here in the, in the marketplace. So there's, for example, an icon set. Let's just test that out. We might need more icons, so there's never a uh, uh, bad thing about downloading more things that, than what we need. So let's just check this out as well. You can see when, I, when it, something is syncing, this is how it shows me that something I'm currently downloading. And by the way, here I can already see that this is an SVG, so it's a vector icon set. So if I double click on it, we quickly switch to Illustrator and we can see that it's a really nice one actually. It has quite a lot of character, these icons. So if I need to use anything from this, let's say this new one, I can just grab it. Right, we need to double click. And then that one, if I just copy, go back to InDesign again and paste in here. Now we have elements from two different designers. And this is actually, this one is definitely vector, so I can make it as big as I want it to. So you can see how quickly we can start to collect a lot of different things either from within our team or even expand it to anyone else on the Creative Cloud. And the cool thing is that Adobe actually did the best thing in 2014 when they decided to buy Behance. How many of you guys are on Behance? Cool. So this is probably one of the biggest portfolio sites. And uh, it was already massive and great before Adobe bought them. But uh, now that it's part of the Adobe Creative Cloud family, it's again not very closely integrated. Now let me show you why I'm talking about it. Um, so apart from just finding random stuff on the market, which by the way, we could of course search in. So it's not just like just randomly seeing things there. Of course, we can just like in Adobe stock, we could look for things. So if I'm looking for, I don't know, a cat, uh, actually, Mark asked me to look for sheep, so let's just look for sheep. So if we do that, uh, there you go, Mark. Are you happy now? Much happier. Much happier. Cool. So you can see that you can find loads of stuff, and these are vector files as well. So if I hover over it, it will tell me what it is. Let's see. This one should be no, it's not showing now. Maybe because I'm zoomed in, but doesn't matter. I can I can use these in my my uh, library, and then I can use it in any of the work after that. But if I want to work or collaborate with someone specific, um, through Behance, you can get in touch with people and you can, you can actually uh, invite them to work again, just like I invited Emily to work with me. I can find people on Behance and I can start collaborating them with them through a library or multiple libraries. And I actually did this on multiple occasions and um, I found some amazing artists and it's, it's incredible how easy it is to connect to people from around the world. Um, I have, uh, let me just show you this. So if I go to Behance, that's actually here another tab called Community, you can see that uh, we have uh, the profile that I can go to, but I can also see an activity. So these are uh, things that I liked or I appreciated or people maybe I'm following appreciated, but I can also go to my work and I can see what people liked from the recent work that I've done. So I can see how many people seen them and how many people appreciated. And then I can also look for work just in general here directly in Creative Cloud. But if I go to view profile, I can quickly jump into my actual Behance profile and I can show you a little bit more. So if you are a creative and if you're not on Behance yet, that's your number one priority after you leave. Uh, or even now, you can already set up your Behance por uh, portfolio. 
Um, I actually got at least three big projects through Behance, and I got once a full-time employment through Behance. They found me on Behance. I was in London, I was working somewhere else, and then I actually ended up working with them for a year and a half, an agency. They got, got in touch with me through Behance. So it's a great place to, be, uh, to have that exposure and people finding you through your work. So if you don't have it yet, it's completely free, by the way. Even if you don't have Creative Cloud, you can have your Behance portfolio. But what I wanted to show you is that if I want to look for people that I want to work with, I can just go to Discover, and I can see recent work published by uh, other artists. And if I find someone here that I really like, I can get in touch with them. But let me show you someone that I really like. Uh, if I go back to my Behance profile, I can show you collections that I have. Actually, appreciated probably will be a nice one. So she is actually someone I know. Um, and I met through Behance, Almu Redondo. Let me just see, show her portfolio. See, she worked with me. We collaborated on these characters. She's a concept artist, and uh, she's just amazing, the, the work she does. Um, and then I got in touch with her on Behance and told her that we need to, I need to do this project. Would you like to collaborate with me? And the cool thing is that you can see on Behance, it actually says multiple owners. There's my name and there's her name. The way it works is that if I upload my project and I know that we work together on it, I can just say that she worked with me and immediately it shows up in her portfolio as well. And then anything that I update on it will also update in her portfolio. So it's again, just seamlessly integrates everything together and keeps creatives really linked together. So it's like joining really forces and working together and whatever I do will also help her in her work and vice versa. So if I want to get in touch with anyone, Obviously, I know her, but it would be the same with any random people on Behance that I find. There will be, as long as they allow, but 90% of the people would allow this, to send a message. And that's like direct messaging someone. It's like emailing someone, right? So I could just get in touch and say, oh, hey, Almu, I love your work. Would you like to work with, on this project with me? And you would be uh, like surprised how responsive most creatives are. Everyone I contacted was, was happy, and as long as they were free, they met me. And I met so many amazing artists through that. Like, I was in Hungary recently, so I have some Hungarian messages here. I'm from Hungary as well. But I haven't been there for a while, and because I went back, I contacted some people. I met up with some amazing artists, and through them, I already got a couple of projects I can work on. Although things are really online, and everything you do online, it's very important to use the tools that are online to meet people in person. Because that's obviously, it's never going to be better than meeting someone in person and then, then really talk to those people you admire or you want to work with. So I highly recommend to use Behance. And uh, as I said, look at this, jobs. Now, once again, uh, there's loads of jobs here for US. But you don't have to worry about that because a lot of projects don't need you to be in the US, so you can be anywhere. There's loads of, proje loads of uh, like project based jobs here where you can just say, okay, you will be working from London on a project in the US. It happened with me. I worked actually, I worked with someone from Switzerland recently. I'm working on a project on Berlin, and all these started from Behance. Okay, so it's a brilliant place to start off looking for jobs, um, or even if you are an employer to look for creatives through Behance is, is a great one. You can post jobs as well here. If you have a Creative Cloud account, which most of you have, so I, I just want to show you this as well very uh, quickly. If you haven't done this already, make sure you set up an Adobe portfolio as well, uh, which can be on your own uh, domain. If you have a domain that you can use, like I have pahiniak.com, which I actually already opened here, so I just go to that one. Uh, you can link your domain, your private domain, to your Behance account, and then it's going to create this version of your Behance account, which can serve as an even more like, clean and nice uh, branded version of your Behance portfolio. So you can see here it's just the work itself, and then it's under my, my domain. 
So that's again something, if you are a Creative Cloud subscriber, you will have this option, the My Portfolio option. That's also very important. So make sure you make use of that. If I come back here, I can show you that was also part of this process. That's the My, my Portfolio. There's no extra work you have to do with that. It's just simply linking your Behance to that domain that you have. And it presents the work that you upload on Behance even in a neater way. And of course you can uh, tick or untick projects. So if you have more things on Behance, if you want to refine it a bit more, what's showing up on the My Portfolio version, you can easily untick a couple of projects. They stay on Behance, but they won't, uh, uh, they won't showing up on your My Portfolio version. Okay, now let's have a look at the client feedback. The Creative Cloud files I'm coming back to. So what I'm going to do is to save this, what I've done here, uh, into my Creative Cloud file or folders. So I go to File, Save As. And I go into Creative Cloud Files. You see here I have that. And then I'm going to save it within the Sweet Home project. So I already have a folder for it. I save it in there. I'm going to call this one Leaflet. So let's save. This is an InDesign file. So the INDD file now is going to be synced. Here on the top in the, uh, on the option bar, I could see the little syncing icon. And now it's synced. So it's uploaded already. Now if I want to see this file, I can go to my Creative Cloud app and from the assets, I just go to files and I can go to view on web. So if I do that, I will get the browser version of my Creative Cloud files. And within that, I will be able to find all those folders that I created, including the Sweet Home project. So let's just go into that. And you see, I have a couple of things here already, but there's my InDesign file. Now, the first cool thing about this, if I click on that, this would be the same case for uh, a client who I send this to have a look at. They would be able to preview any f Adobe files, including Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, so they don't have to have the Creative Cloud applications. You just send them a link, and this beautiful, uh, clean version of the work will come up and they will be able to f go through the pages within the InDesign file. Okay, so some of you might have tried the publish online feature, which is great, but that's more for a, like a user or a customer. This is more of a relation or like a feedback from a client. So this is obviously a non, not a public uh, project. So only those will see it, who, whoever gets the link. Currently, only I can see it, but let's see if I send this link to my client. So, by the way, just, just as a side note, you can see here it still says private, so I, only I have access to it. And it's quite cool that I can see what tools were used for this, and that my client will see it as well, that I used InDesign, and I used these fonts. It lists all the fonts, out of which two were non Typekit fonts, and these are Typekit fonts, and this is the color theme, which again, the client will be able to click on and even suggest changes to the color theme if they want to. But let me, let me not go that much ahead. So if I want to share this, all I have to do here on the top right to say send link or share to Slack. Uh, I'm actually going to use Slack, but I'm just going to use send link just to make it faster, create public link, and then I'm going to copy it. Now, although it became public, it doesn't mean that if anyone, random people on the web will be able to access it, just those people who get the link. So I'm just going to switch to uh, Slack, and I'm going to share it with my client. There you go, I've sent it. And then, is it going to be Jessica, your alter, alter ego? <laughs> yes. So Jessica, our client, is going to reply to this. So we are waiting for the client feedback here on the browser. And all I need to do is to switch to activity. So you saw the details panel. Now I'm on the activity panel. And I can see that the current version was created today. And that's the size of the current version. Now there's no comments right now. But as long as you start sharing it with anyone involved in this project, and they start sending you comments, all the comments will show up here on the right side. So I will be able to keep track exactly who said what and when. And based on that, I can make my changes. So let's see what Jessica is coming back with uh, to us. So there you go. Uh, there are far too many triangles on page two. That's very true. So um, 
Okay, so if I want to get back to my client, I will then go back to InDesign and I go to the second page and let's just remove these triangles and let me just simplify it a bit, <laughs> the page. So now if I save this, this is the interesting bit. I'm going to save it. So I didn't do anything, just press Command S or Control S. Let's see what happens. First of all, notice how the linking was done. That was, that was it. We didn't even have to wait longer than that. Now let's see what happens here in the second page. So we are still seeing the original one, but now it updated. So we removed our triangles and we can see that we revised four minutes. Uh, this is the current version and the original one was the one that we've done four minutes ago. So now let's see what the client has to say about this. We will wait for another feedback. But in the meantime, if I want to see how the original version was created, I could select that. And the cool thing is that it's stored and accessible even in the browser version, not just for me, but for the client as well. So they don't need to keep files on their computer. You don't have to worry about emailing them. Everything is done through this one centralized place on the browser where you can keep track of all the versions, all the feedback, and you can get to the final version that can be then uh, approved by the client. So I can switch between the versions, the clients can switch between the versions, and we can keep advancing and improving the design. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. So let's see what the client will reply to us. So we have Jessica coming back, perfect. So very <laughs> minimalist, yes. Well done, cool. So we are happy with this. Now, if I want to then share this work, let's say we agreed with the client that this can be shared online. How will I share this on, on Behance? And this is the last bit of the presentation. So just to come back to InDesign, we can see that we have um, here the whole workflow. And um, we can see that at the end, I, I'm in, within publishing, I have Behance, my portfolio as stock, actually I want to show and Spark as well, just very quickly. So if I want to upload any work here, all I have to do is to create a new project up here. I'm not going to go through this because it's child's play really how to do this. It loads a project editor and then everything is drag and drop. So it's literally the easiest thing you can imagine. If I want to upload files, I can select that. And actually notice that we have creative cloud option here, which is the best thing because then it accesses those CC files, which we refine with the client. So I can go into those files and that's the InDesign file that we had. So I can actually directly access those within Behance and then it uploads it straight in here. So it's just, just uh, amazing how everything is coming together once you start utilizing Creative Cloud. And then all I would have to do is to refine it, put some text in and then continue and publish it and it will show up straight on my uh, portfolio and then it will go into my portfolio with my domain as well. So I don't even go into detail on that. Let me show instead something else. So let's say this was a, a free work. Uh, we were not paid for this, uh, but the client allowed, and the client, because of that, the client allowed us to use this and maybe sell it as a stock element as well. Let's say that's, that's the characters that we designed with Amu. So if I want to sell this on Adobe Stock, I could go to publish. By the way, I'm in Bridge now. It's again something that is a part of the Creative Cloud. It's, it's a file management application. I highly recommend to try it if you haven't tried it already. The reason I like it, amongst many other reasons, is that you can directly upload uh, files onto your stock, Adobe Stock profile. So you can see here, there is a publish panel and it just says sell your images on Adobe Stock. So if I say set up, all I have to do is to just link it to my account on this laptop. I haven't done it yet because I use it with my other computer. But this is actually something that I have a couple of accounts on Adobe. This is one of the accounts that I created where I have a few of my photographs. And the reason I wanted to show this to you is because here I can actually see that I uploaded these a week ago and I already made two pounds. That's how cool is that? Yeah. So I think there was one sale on this and two sales on that. That's essentially how it works. So you will see all the things that you sell, whether it's a vector illustration, whether it's a photograph, or even footage. And 
you would be surprised how many successful creators are on, the, on the Adobe stock who actually just take uh, capturing footage with their iPhone. You can actually sell it and make money from that if you are creative and enough. So the mobile phones, the cameras on these are like 4K recording now. So you have like an amazing quality, especially, I don't know, the latest phones. If you use them, uh, you can capture amazing quality videos as well, not just photos, but videos. And you can start selling them on the stock website. Uh, so I highly, highly recommend that as well. And then one last thing before I finish uh, the presentation. Spark is not like the biggest thing, but it's still worth checking out. It's actually a free thing. So even if you don't have Creative Cloud, you can use it. And what it does is that you can put together a landing page or just a post or a video uh, without using any editing applications. Uh, simply, again, a drag and drop quick and easy interface. If you think of Vix, it's quite similar to that. So I'm just going to show you an example that, again, we did for this project that I'm showing you right now, the, the Sweet Home project. So this was done within Spark. It's all online, and it's a fully responsive website, which has even parallax effects. You can see that certain things are moving with different speed. Uh, that's we call parallax effect, plus they are showing up when I'm scrolling down. So it's a really nice clean website which has videos in it and so on and so, so forth and i just show you how nicely they've done the responsiveness as well so if i change the change the actual browser see that the text is changing and realigning it but you can see it nicely realigned everything to a more like mobile phone size so uh, the way you create a spark page is again extremely easy i won't even go into detail on that all you have to do is to say you want to start a new project and you can decide whether it's a page, a video or a post. Post is for like social media like Facebook and Twitter. And then let's say you go into page and similarly to the Behance project creator, here you just start typing things like let's say I want to add the photo. Once again, we see our Creative Cloud files. So if you haven't started using CC files, make sure you do because everything is connected to it. And you could even find Adobe stock here. If it's your own image on stock, then obviously that will be free to use. But if I just select one of the images that we created in this project, I can select that and it automatically puts it in the background and it even uh, like dims it out a bit so the text will be nicely uh, uh, legible on top of it. And then further on, you could add video and so on and so forth. So it's extremely fast and easy. Why would you do this? Again, it's a great way to get your work out there. So if you, if you want to have, besides a Behance project, something that you can share with people, which tells more of a story, let's say the creation of the project, which of course you can do in Behance as well, but this is probably an even nicer uh, website that's fully responsive and it can be shared and it looks like a separate page or website created specifically to tell that story. So that's again something I would recommend to do at the end as part of the full publishing side of the, the project. And thank you so much for attending. Thank you. And enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks a lot for staying till the end. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, as I'm adding similar content regularly. If you are interested in learning more from me, you should probably check out my comprehensive training courses on my site. I have more than 200 hours of video training from beginner to expert levels, with lots of exercises, quizzes, and resources to help you develop your skills and become a professional designer. Just click on this link and create an account to start your free trial. Thanks again for joining me today and I hope to see you in the next one.